chat room. I wanted to make sure, you know, that's an important piece of this whole thing is listening yeah, to uh, the questions. I know people were asking us what we're using. We do use everything. I love Livestream. I love Wirecast. We have a TriCaster here, but vMix Call is pretty revolutionary, and it, we, I don't For see any show. other way of doing this without vMix, and if uh, someone else has a better solution, let me know, but um, there's no way. I don't know any other software that could bring on this many guests in 1080p than vMix. Yeah. You, might see, you might see some more later this year. I would hope so. I would hope so. <laughs> oh, uh, don't leave us with a tease. Come on. I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's NDA. Some, uh, oh, okay. We'll be on the lookout. <laughs> I think this uh, show's been a lot of fun for everybody in the chat because I'm sort of seeing them all reminiscing on their experiences with live streaming. And when we were talking about the computers, they were all typing um, what computers they used for the first time. Um, so it's mostly great conversation going on, but there are, are some great questions that were from a while ago. Jason Bates said, what is the best way to distribute your live content? Are there companies out there that help with distribution of content? So basically, well, I think the floor is open. <laughs> <laughs> the, I can I'll start and then somebody Take else can pick up here. But um, so in terms of distribution, you know, we have the ability, if, if you're talking social platforms like Facebook and Periscope and stuff, um, you know, you have the ability to actually multicast, simulcast out to as many platforms as you want, as long as you have the hardware, the internet, um, and, and all the capabilities to do so. So you can distribute to multiple places, including an embed, a private embed on your own website. Um, and, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about the need for people to want to bring people back to their own house. Um, you know, you can use like a dot live URL for that kind of distribution where you say, Hey, just join me at live streaming pros dot live. And then you control that and you can distribute from there. If you want, that's, that's one option. I mean, there, you can pretty much do whatever you want in terms of distribution and you can house that all within some of the hardware stuff that we've they've already talked about uh, and their services like um joycaster um that allow a switchboard live now um that allow you to do that where you don't have to house all of the bandwidth requirements for that but you can send um one signal to them and then they send it out to all the different places through the cloud. So some options there. <laughs> Is your preference to send people to um, watch your show on your website? Or I watch you on Facebook mostly. I actually prefer to send them to a social network like Facebook because even though I want control on my website, mm -hmm. it's it's still, so you get a lot of benefit out of the social aspect because the more that you have on Facebook, the more um, engagement they see, the more they send you out to the world, mm -hmm. right? So their algorithm is, is, is such that when they see that people like what you're doing and view it, then you get more reach, you get more views. So it's a catch 22. There's really not, it depends on what your end goal is. And my end goal is to be the social person, right? To be the social expert. So I need to be using those platforms and I need to have more engagement on them, right? So uh, it, it really depends on your end goal, I think. I, I think what Corey mentioned earlier uh, about if you're not going out to multiple destinations, you're, you're kind of, if you're just relying on an embed, you're kind of dead. And I, I 100,000% agree with that. And just tying in what you were saying, Loria, about where people are discovering you. I, I, I noticed that with stuff I did, where on Fa especially when Facebook um, put out their API, it was a whole new audience there. Because a lot of people, that's all they know is Facebook. That's where they spend a lot of their social time. But going And then the idea of, I, I, I was the same way. I really want people to come back to my own site, you know, and I want to control it. But I think I've come to the realization that this is just not going to be possible. And I think the benefit that you get and again, what you're saying about the social sharing outweighs the the need to have them always come back to your site. Still have your site because if something happens to Facebook or YouTube or any of all the sites that you don't directly control, you still want them to come back. You still want to advertise your URL and all that. But the idea of kind of really worrying about where they go, 
uh, you know, wherever they pick me up is great because it's more eyeballs and, it, and it's good. And, and again, Facebook, I think, is really winning. It'll be interesting what YouTube does because Facebook, to me, is really winning the day as far as the comments staying there persistently. I mean, we have clients that are not necessarily the best engaging on air, but they always say, well, we're going to go back to the comments. If we miss anything, we'll go back and answer every comment. Right. Because it doesn't go away, that's that's a great that's a great feature, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, Marty, we did fix just say, that. Just so you know, um, we 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 have a free plugin for all of our customers that downloads all all YouTube comments as well as Facebook comments and actually brings them all into a single feed, um, which is called Chat Connect Pro, and that was our biggest nice. problem. But sorry, Corey, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just about the distribution. You know, with live. I always tell people that 99.999% of all people in video production are shooting with the camera, editing it, and then they're putting it on some kind of platform, right? And then the 0.001% of us are actually doing this live. And so there's always like a, a very different thing for us that we need. And on the distribution side, I would prefer to locally encode to my distribution platforms and not use a cloud service. For instance, behind me, we have some Sputnik servers in a, in a, in on-premise, right? Not in the cloud. And that is because if Amazon goes down, my client's gonna look at me when I'm using Teradek Core, and they're like, hey, why are all my streams not working? We did, a, a, the, we did the SB Nation stream, went to 32 Facebook pages, and we used Teradek Core. And I had to put the server in my back room because I can't look at Vox Media and say, sorry, like Amazon's down. So you got to be very careful in live. You know, we live in a redundant world. Like my brain always thinks about the redundancy, right? Last mile redundancy and, and redundancy can actually get in your way. And that's happened to me before where I've been too redundant in the sense of like, I've overcomplicated things in my workflow. But on the distribution side, you really need to think about okay, where do I need to be, right? Like vMix is a great software, Wirecast is a great software where you can actually use one encoder to go to multiple platforms, right? And so all then you need is a primary and backup encoder. But, you know, I, I use, I've used Joycaster slash Switchboard Live before, but again, I'm pretty sure a lot of these new products that are coming out, they're gonna be running on cloud platforms like uh, AWS or Google or, and every month or every two months, that is going to go down for the hour that you are streaming. <laughs> now I lost um, who asked this question, but they said, "Just curious," and I thought it was a good point. If the average viewer is becoming more mobile, watching on their iPads or cell phones, um, what's the value of pushing 4K, 1080P, etc., if they can't access that on their cell phone? Because while there are a lot more mobile viewers you got to consider the TV aspect of it as well. So everything social is moving to TV. So Facebook came out with their Facebook app um, where you can access live videos as well as recorded videos um, on your big screen TV. And when I pull it up on my TV, I don't want to watch a portrait uh, video that is black screens all over it. Like yeah. the majority of the TV is a black screen, right? Um, and it's buffering and it's it's low quality. Like I don't want to watch that on the big screen. So we are seeing a merge of where you have to pay attention to both mobile tiny screens and the big screens. So that's where quality comes into play. Definitely a good point. Does anybody else want to touch on that before we move on? I want to no, make sure I give everybody I, an opportunity. I, yeah, I, I think Lori has hit the nail around the head. I mean, I, again, this is the trend, you know, that we're seeing, you know, all these companies competing for content and where, where can you go with anything? Anything you do is is always going to be a quality thing right now. It doesn't mean to say that, and I like what Lori said again, where you're kind of building in layers. It's not that you're going to hit that high quality, even what Corey's doing. Corey's doing some very high end work, you know, higher end than what I do. I work with with, with smaller businesses and I'm using a lot of software-based products and going to Facebook and all that stuff and talking head type of stuff. So it's finding the right tools for the right job. So what Corey does, you 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 need that redundancy. I you know, I mean, I, I come from a 20-year career at ESPN, so I've I've been there. I, I I've been you know in the big control rooms, and I know what that takes. And redundancy, I when he said is it, like that's all we did. 90% of the time, we just worked on redundancy. 10% of the time, you saw what's on the screen. 
But all the plans we had, all the double feeds, all the redundant feeds, fiber feeds, satellite feeds, all all that stuff, you know. So, but uh, but yeah, I mean that's where it's going, you know. I mean, you know, Apple TV for people that have Apple TVs. I mean, you can put you can get an app made fairly inexpensively and put it on there, and, and pe- you know, the lean, lean back, and also people are watching on their phones too. So, I guess you got to hit all the screens, you know. I mean, and and again, if you're can you shoot out the best possible quality, it'll adapt to that screen. But that doesn't mean that, you know, it's going to show up, like Luria said, when you're watching on a, on a 60-inch, you know, uh, LCD, L- LED backlit, you know, in your living room, and you're sending low-quality video versus someone sending high-quality 4K, I mean, it's going to be pretty apparent, you know, so. I'd just like to jump in, though, as a devil's advocate and, and just say one thing. I, I think the I, I think with respect to 720p versus 1080, I think the difference is somewhat negligible unless you're really talking about sports and 60p. I would much rather have another camera, another angle than have, you know, a, a 1080 stream versus a 720p stream. I think really you're, you're kind of at this point splitting hairs on that. Um, but really, it's the, it's the value of the production as to how is the lighting? How is the sound? Do you have enough cameras? Are you getting good coverage? That's the type of thing that I think is going to accelerate your stream into being something that's more engaging and worth watching, whether you're setting 4K. And the question you need to ask yourself is, like, do you really have the CPU power to, to do that, to send that 4K or that 1080p60 stream? Because if you don't, you shouldn't send it because it's not worth your stream going down or you're having any computer issues on the trunk going out. Um, you know, it, it just the quality difference isn't worth it. So you're better to play it safe um, and to really know the, 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 like if you are sending to a Facebook or YouTube and you, you need to understand what their, what their cloud transcoding is doing um, so that you know how to properly match that and how to properly send that. But really, to me, it's about adding that extra camera in and making sure that your production is tight more so than what the bit rate is you're sending at. Well, and the reality is that, to your point, Michael, the reality is, is through your whole chain, do you have 1080p60? No, mm-hmm. unless you don't have 4K, unless you're using an Ursa Mini right now. Because Ari Alexa, Red, none of the higher end cameras have any kind of 4K output. 12G SCI right. has only been a standard since November, even though Blackmagic right. has had it for eight months. You know, like most people are like, oh yeah, I want to do that. That means you're using a Terranex and you're up to whatever it is, right. because your full chain right. Right now, you're really looking at 1080p 30. 3G SDI is really like where you could get your whole chain through. So people, again, it goes back to my like 99.9, 99% actually shoot something and record it, which they've been able to do 4K forever, right? And we've actually only really been able to do true 4K for about five months live, five, six months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something else that our audience brought up a few times, and Luria, I did see you um, comment on this during the show, um, multi-streaming to different platforms. Where do we stand on that? Is it an ethics issue, especially with Facebook, um, saying that they don't approve of you streaming to other places at the same time? Well, so let's clarify that a little bit. So Facebook, what they don't allow is you to go to their API plus any other API. Um, and API versus RTMP, these are two connections that we are you know, talking directly to that platform. Um, so through the API, you can only go to Facebook or you can go to RTMP to Facebook and API to somebody else, right? So you, you, you can definitely multi-stream. Facebook has rules around that. You just got to follow the rules. You um, do a custom but- RTMP, is that what that means? You have to- uh, right. So you so each of the platforms, so Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, all of them, and Ustream or Livestream, any anybody will use uh, an RTMP, um, and then you've got API options as well. Um, and Did you know that, Paul? This there's a whole I, bigger I dis- that, <laughs> discussion. But, um, yeah, yeah Laurie is breaking it down here. Yeah. I was confused. Did, like, did you want to add something there, Corey? Question. Well, I'm just going to say, like, if you go to Wikipedia's page and you look at RTMP, right, people are like, what's RTMP? It's like, it's, an, it's typically an H.264 trend, typically H.264 codec and AAC video, typically, right? But then when you read on Wikipedia, it's actually started by Flash, right? It's based on a Flash transport, and, like, we're completely done with Flash. So it's hilarious how RTMP is, like, literally what we all stand on. Mm-hmm. And yeah. when are we going to get a new transport standard? Like, that's, that's well, a nerdy thing for me to know, say, but... 
<laughs> I think I'm geeking out today. It's all right. At, at NAB, My, and I forget what a, what what the encoding was, but or the uh, the process was. I, there was a new system, and I did an interview with this guy, and I totally blanked <laughs> on the name of it. But it's I'll, I'll find it. Um, but it's basically a very low latency uh, new form of communication. So Facebook could adopt that versus RTMP, and we could you know, have a, a better connection, low latency, almost no latency, which would be amazing, but that's for the future. So in terms of, um, that's kind of the, the rules around it, but you asked about whether we should or not. Yeah. Um, and I, my, my answer to that is always, you can multi stream as long as you have the, the correct bandwidth and, and, you know, make sure that you can do it successfully. But beyond that, if you cannot engage with the audience at each of those locations successfully, mm -hmm. then there is no point and you will actually harm yourself by, uh, by simulcasting um, if you try and go everywhere and you can't engage everywhere because people will take that as a kind of a slap in the face almost, you know? So you gotta be able You're to be there yeah. and comment. Yeah. Well, you mentioned latency, and with all these great minds in this room, I would love to ask about latency. From what I've under seen with my own eyes, Facebook has very low latency, and YouTube's like three times as much. Um, can we just talk about latency a little bit, what you guys have experienced? Well, yeah, so latency is not about the transport protocol. When I was at Livestream, original Livestream, which is much like Ustream and Twitch, which Amazon bought for a billion dollars, it based the ingest does RTMP, right? But the latency starts at your ingest point, right? It's from your ingest point to your edge servers and so and your CDN out. And so typically, companies that have DVR feature functionality, so we were at Livestream Original, if you go on Livestream Original, which I believe GeekBeat TV was on Livestream Original platform back in the yeah. day, just to, kind of, <laughs> just to kind of name drop there. Um, well, so that actually was really low latency. Like you literally like streamed and you saw it almost like FaceTime, like maybe maybe 300 ms, 400 ms, but there was no caching and there was no DVR functionality. So once you start adding the multi bit rate, the transport, the DVR, the cache, that's mm. where your latency comes in on all your platforms. Ah. But it's on it's on Facebook and YouTube's that side of things, correct? Yeah, so, so basically, like, like how I always say it is, like, I'm streaming to some server, right, close to me. Mm -hmm. Typically, it's an Akamai server. Akamai HDNet it powers a lot of things except for Facebook and Google. So I'm sending to my nearest thing. From there, I'm then going to a server that's recording. I'm going to my Edge server so people can view it. It's that, it's that is where the time comes. Interesting. So I didn't. I did not know that. All, all from from my perspective, all I really know is okay. I'm definitely seeing less latency on Facebook than YouTube, and I've got two microphones here. Anyway, but yeah, thank you got you a lot of mics. <laughs> 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 Doubled mics halfway through the show. Let me wow. hide myself away. <laughs> That's the only way of doing stereo, Paul. Way to go. You're <laughs> mic. Yeah, thanks. Oops. Uh, are there any other questions to us? There's a lot of conversation going on, um, but I think that really covers it for questions for us. Really wanted to share that video. We didn't get a chance to of the first ever video conference. Oh, we don't really have. Yeah, time we don't have time to. for that. Um, we we covered all the questions, huh? Pretty much. There's a lot of conversation going on. Of course, NDI was brought up. Can we talk a little Ooh. bit about NDI? I would love if you guys are still have time. Can oh. somebody talk about it? Oh, oh someone doesn't. Ah. Really. Whoa, oh, we got sorry. a thumbs down. This could we be a time. This could be very timely, Corey. Oh. I, I need to hear this. What's going on? NDI. Corey. NDI is a compressed Corey, format. Nah. NDI, no. It's going to be the IP side is going to be either Ames or um, and I can't remember the other one right now, but. The problem with NDI is it's compressed. It's going to be good for some things, but you actually need a pretty high-level processor to do the decoding side. So we've seen this with TriCaster 8000 where, you know, it's, I don't know, I'm not, it, I, honestly, I hate to say this, but I feel like New Tech just like threw a Hail Mary and saw if anybody would catch it. Well, well, they did. I think the thing, though, I mean, is that people cow. did. I mean, they've got major market penetration now. So while I do agree that you are correct on the, on the quality side, uh, the, they're so far ahead of the game, uh, ahead of anybody else. I mean, it's, it's 
So I, I think it's going to have a big yeah, impact but there, for them. But, but, but IP 2220 just came out, right? The simply standard for IP just came out. So that right there, that's what everybody follows, right? So and it's Ames and the other one, I can never remember it, but it's, a, it's like another A name. But there's huge people behind that. So yeah, they got out ahead, but eh, TBD. Mm -hmm. I do right. have one complaint about NDI currently um, that I think they're going to fix. But basically, if you take an RTSP stream that's NDI that's already got H.264 encoding on it and you make it NDI, it's immediately 100 megabit per second um, on, your on your network. So it like takes something that's already compressed, repackages it, and makes it 10, 100 times larger. Um, and that just makes no sense to me at all. Apparently, they're going to fix that, but... Yeah, I mean, Bruce from video links not happy. Who who would like who here likes <laughs> NDI? Is anyone here like like NDI? I, Just Marty. I love I'll NDI. Put my, I'll put my I hand do. up for NDI. For, for what I do, it, it works great. I mean, not for the high high end stuff. I tell me tell, I understand what Corey's saying, but for a lot of stuff I do, and, I, and again, you have to have a beefy processor and, and machine that I do, uh, and you have to understand networking, but. And for certain, I mean, I guess what it comes down to for me is I use a lot of different things, right? And I look at it as really, a t at least for what I do, as a toolbox. And I think a lot of people don't really understand this. They they think that you can pick up an app and automatically it's going to make you some great video producer. And it's not. You know, you got to learn how to use it, you know. But what's great now, what's happening now is there are so many great, interesting tools that in the right combinations can do some interesting things. And I think just understanding your tools and how you can use them to best effect is really the key. And I see a lot of people getting into this that, again, it's, it's like the old Photoshop thing where people want to do a graphic and they think, oh, I'll just buy Photoshop and I'll be a graphics wizard. And it's just not the case. That's just the start. <laughs> you know? Well, so. let me say something about NDI. And so the, I actually work closely with New Tech and we're working on an NDI camera. It's not ready yet. Um, but. <gasps> Yeah, no, everyone knows we're working on one. <laughs> oh. I just can't say when, when it's ready. <laughs> um, so so here, here's what I'll say about NDI. In, in NDI's defense um, versus SMPTE 2022 and all the other systems out there, I think that you're going to see new tech innovate. Like we've, we've seen them do it for 20 years, right? They're going to do it specific. They're not going to be probably the world standard. But in our broadcast niche, they're going to do some cool things I can't even say some of the things that they promised me they're going to be able to do one day. But um, I think you're going to see some stuff that is going to be very niche that we're going to be like, wow, I need that as a broadcaster. That some of the larger you know, IP standards, they're not focused just on broadcast the way new tech is. So I think even though they're trying to claim to be like the best IP standard in the world, um, I th and I, I wish you know we had someone from new tech here who could talk. I don't even know that much about it. But I think that because they're going to be niche, and they're going to go after, like, they want this to be more than just broadcast. They want this to be in every conference room and boardroom and training space. They, you know, they wanted their TriCasters to be, like, you know, conferencing devices in a way. So I think you're going to see some cool niche stuff come out um, that's going to solve a lot of problems. And we're already seeing, what, 82 different uh, companies at NAB uh, announcing support. NAB, it was, like, the big deal there. Yeah. From what I so I think because it's so niche, that allows them to kind of not focus on these like humongous IP cloud uh, problems and just focus on the things that people like us really care about. Would you would you agree with me there? No. No. Bruce from Video Link Sorry. earlier said if you have a TriCaster, if you have a TriCaster, then NDI is great. I have a multi-million dollar company that doesn't need a TriCaster. I have a TriCaster 465 sitting in my office. Uh, I've had a TriCaster fail on me more than any product in the history of live streaming. Uh, they are the least innovative company in the world in broadcast. They, no, no. You're going to see it. You're going to see IP standards blow people away. They just did this year. And the, the Alliance had to get together and the simple standards have to be there. Much like 12 GSDI. Like, no. That's just me, though. That's one company I can crap on and, and not have to worry about my uh, bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, First of guys, I also, guys, I also agree with Corey as well, because Corey said a very important word, compressed video. NDI compresses the video and then sends it to wherever. So you've now got a compressed video feed. 
And guess what you're going to do before you send it out of that vMix, VidBlaster, Trecaster? We're going to compress it again for free because we think we should be. And let's, so compression. So basically I've come from, and Corey, correct me if I'm wrong with you doing stuff. I know a lot of my stuff, as much as I can keep it uncompressed through the chain, the yep. better. As soon as I'm compressing, I'm adding artifacts, I'm adding noise, I'm adding you, know, you name it, to for free, as I call it, because NDI is for free, and they'll add that compression and stuff like that to the actual feed, and then before you actually do send it out to the YouTubes, the Facebooks, the CDNs of the world, you are compressing that again. So if you think about it, good to not so good to whatever is going to come out. And I can't say anything because we're officially on YouTube, or I would use other terminology. But there's, you know, in the in the broadcast world, there's certain words that they would say. But basically, you always want to keep everything uncompressed as much as possible, all the way through the chain. And the very last minute, when you know you have to compress it to either record it, or to send it out live, or wherever you're sending it to, should it be a projector? Should it be Stream should it be to, you know, recording it to disc, but as much so as possible you want to stay out much. So, but don't we need to get to an IP workflow where everything's connected? And, and can we? Is it realistic to do anything over IP without compression? Yeah, I mean, IP has compression, right? Like, uh, uh, to Bruce Richardson made a comment saying all IP protocols are compressed. Yes, right. But a hundred megabit. Uh, NDI uh, decoding. It's just like way too much processing power. They really didn't think it through. Yeah, a lot of people are going to use it. You know why? Because a lot of people own a TriCaster. Like, duh. And all these legacy companies own TriCasters, right? It's that. That's why it's going to be around for a while. And there's going to be a couple things that are going to be better for it. And I get it. Yes. It's, it's a terrible compression, though. I, I'm sorry. It's not a very good compression scheme. Well, while that may be true, I, I simply don't see how that's a, a deal breaker. I mean, the, the ability to use yeah. NDI, which now I also, you know, will say is in Livestream Studio. You know, we use it in Livestream Studio all the time. Yep. And the fact that I can bring in graphics channels so smoothly from New Blue and all these other companies, and I can bring in my Premiere Pro timeline, I was never able to do this before without a key and a fill and more SDI channels. I mean, that to me, whether it's recompressed or not, is, is, is the real difference that makes a difference. And that's, that's the great. thing that people notice, that you can bring in all those additional fields, all, all those additional layers, as opposed to whether or not they're going to see some minor artifacting that may or may not be visible to their eye. Yeah. So I, to I, me, I'm it's all about the flexibility. I, I don't think that the compression, uh, you know, I don't even think that like H.264, H.265, I don't think the common man can tell the difference between that and uncompressed video. You guys can. You guys are broadcast professionals, but regular people, I mean, when they're watching H.264. You can when you dissolve, right? You can when you dissolve. So for instance, when remember back in the days of 500 kbps, so the difference between 500 kbps and 700 kbps was when I was doing an Obama stream, when I actually did a dissolve in 700 kbps, the dissolve didn't look like actual garbage, right? It's like, and so as we've gone up, it basically, like, that's where it helps, right? The macro blocking. And I think people would tell the difference between H.264 and H.265 because they're not going to see mosquito netting and macro blocking, right? So, uh, you know, yeah, I agree with you, though. I mean, yeah, I'm nerding out on compression. I get it. And, <laughs> you know, I know Bruce Richardson is going to say that new tech, he, he's going to keep commenting in the channel, and that's fine. But <laughs> just people out there realize there's other products than new tech to do what you're trying to do. I think it's a good conversation to have. And yeah, no, actually, I'm really just starting to, to get really interested people, right now. Everybody's I'm, I'm really on. trying to figure out what, like, you're changing my views of what I've been taught. <laughs> and I'm, because uh, who teaches this stuff, right? Who, it's like New Tech's going out and preaching this stuff. No one else in the industry, who else is really going out and saying, we're going to pioneer an IP workflow and get a hundred different companies on our, on our side to do it with us? If no one Very else important. does, if nobody else is doing that, you know, regardless of the standard, that's why they're going to win, I think. I, I, I really do. I mean, looking at what I've seen, I'm not 
as advanced as you guys are, I'll admit that. But um, there's a lot to be said for the guy who goes out and works with everybody and gets everything integrated for the common man. And I think one of the things we got to think about, too, is this giant triangle where the NBCs and all these people are up here. And the biggest growing portion is the bottom tier of just these entry-level streamers, whether they're doing mobile or they're doing whatever. And now they're starting to jump on board. Laria, I know you know a lot about that market. And um, that's the large growing market. And they want things that work out of the box on a budget. IP friendly is not going to be a problem. You know, it's going to just make things easier for them. Um, and I think that somebody's got to go out and do this. And I don't think that these larger IP um, standards are, are focusing on the live streaming market like New Tech is. Hey. Guys, I'm so sorry to do this. Sorry, I have another stream. Up, Luria. <laughs> no, that's okay. I I don't want to run out in the middle of the conversation, but we, we do have another stream. Time, that's about so yeah, no we did. Taken. <laughs> no problem. Bye, Laria. Thank you so much for joining Thank us, you guys Laria. so much. Have a Hope great day. Have you again. Thanks. Bye, Laria. Would love to. Bye. We just got so heated in this conversation. It got really interesting that we've uh, got ahead yeah, of ourselves. Yeah, and I, so I want to talk to you more, Corey. I mean, maybe now is not the right time because I'm so, like, obsessed with the NDI because I didn't know there was anything else, really. There's um, tons of other things. I mean, that's like – it's. I mean, it's like we use HDSDI right now, right? Before that, we had BNC. I mean, it's like just because it's not the thing. Like, there's over 200 companies – that are part of the Ames Alliance, right? And then the other one is the Sony Alliance for IP. Like, I, I totally agree with you. IP's coming, right? And New Tech did something that Sony used to do, which they were like, hey, let's come out with this before anyone else, right? And that doesn't mean that's the be all, right? It's, in this game, it's not about being first. It never has been. Look at Facebook, right? Interesting. NDI yeah. is like the MySpace of uh, IP compression technology. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And that, I think, in the long term, and I, I, I probably shouldn't even say this, but that seems like a good analogy to fit it into my brain. Because when you are super, super early, you know, and you dive all the way in, um, you either have to burn and churn and stay ahead of the game, which I think New Tech's dedicated in doing, or somebody gigantic smashes you. And then we see that happen all the time. And New Tech is not the biggest company in the world. They're a big company, but they're not huge, like... Microsoft, or like I could see Google being like, bam, here you go, free everybody. IP, use this. You know, they're probably the thing is, no matter what now. happens, no matter what ends up happening, we all win. You know, yeah. yep. this technology is, is just mm -hmm. made for yep. us. And so we all win. So I, I love the competition. I think it's great. You know, I'm sure, Corey, you do as well. Um, and at the end of the day, it's just going to make our shows better. Yep. And I'm probably going to have to use NDI at some point. So as much as I crapped on it, like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> but the one, the one kudos that I will definitely give to NDI and New Tech is that they made it open source. That was a very, very smart Is it really open move. source, though? I don't believe it's open source. It's open yeah. SDK. Um, mm. It's not yeah. necessarily that's, open that's, source. That's, that's still more open than, you know, in Corey's example, Sony. They, they wouldn't, they wouldn't yeah. give you no SDK. Forget about it. Well, it's you more open like than a track car So there's that. Yeah. Well, I think they're all. I mean, I think that NDI is going to become like. I think it, they're showing that that is their future. Um, oh yeah. I mean, that's no secret. Anyway, I probably uh, <laughs> just so interesting to have all of these minds in in the yeah. same space and it. talking about this because Corey, you threw a curveball there. I ha uh, and I was not expecting that. Sorry. Is there anything else we missed? What did we miss? That's pretty much it. Um, you guys have sparked a lot of conversation in the chat about NDI and everybody's going back and forth, but I think that covers it for questions. <laughs> so it's been a very engaging yeah. and intriguing you conversation guys, You guys today, killed it. And I am so happy with it. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Really appreciate you guys Thank taking you. the time to uh, come Thank and you. hang out with all these crazy guys. We're going we're gonna to promote this video like crazy. <laughs> So, Corey, I hate to say that you shat on New Tech. Um, this is, we are blasting this out, this video, out to so many people. Stories. It's all good. 
The post show <laughs> is separate from the regular show, though, when we're yes. in the post show, so um, yeah. it might not be as big as the regular <laughs> show. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm going to be spending like my entire budget on Google AdWords for this thing, so I just hope that, I think we talked about a ton of great stuff, mm -hmm. and I know that thousands and thousands of people are going to watch this and learn a lot. Um, from some really high-end, you know, people who know what they're talking about, and some people that can call bullshit, and some people that can, you know, talk lightly. I think some people danced around the topics, you know, and some people, <laughs> you know, clam. That, 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 that was a word that I wanted to use before, Paul. As a matter of fact, <laughs> but it was great. <laughs> it was. I really appreciate it, guys, and I respect you all a lot for what you've done and in the industry and I want to have you I actually love to have Corey I'd love to have you on for just our your own show where we just really dig into stuff and we really think about how we're going to tackle a really nice show just you and me and Tess one day um, you know we've already had you on Mike just a couple weeks ago Thanks. Michael and Mike same same thing the invitation's always open I'd love to have you guys on again yeah you guys are all great thanks guys take care thanks everybody a lot. thank you thanks enjoy guys. weekend thank take you take care I gotta end the stream. Darling, I think I'm gonna leave.